in the past, we've talked about the benefits of writing and mm -hmm. journaling um, as a part of the, the therapeutic process. Right. And today we're gonna to talk about a very specific type of journaling called visual mm -hmm. journaling. Right. And this is a sort of a, a combination of art, therapy, mm -hmm. and uh, journaling. Do you know anybody who's done this? I do. A patient? Um, no, um, people who, well, I know people who are like art majors and oh. they do this as part of their um, But I mean therapeutically. Their um, no, not therapeutically. But I, I really like this a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. of, of the things we've talked about, the, I don't know why I'm, I, I'm, I lean more toward the visual arts, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. after yesterday's podcast on dance and movement, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, wow, there's a there's quite a bit there yeah. that we could use because I hadn't thought about it as Tai Chi and yoga right, and right. all those other movements. Mm -hmm. This is especially fascinating. It's um, and this woman, we've we've used her material right. before. We've never known how to pronounce her name. Right. But I got to thinking, you know what? We call it bruschetta. I knew you were going to refer to bruschetta. You, br you referred to bruschetta last time we tried to pronounce her name. It's actually bruschetta. Yeah. Hard K. Okay. Bruschetta. Okay. So this would be Malchiati. Okay. Is how you would pronounce her name because the ch it wouldn't be mal she or mal chi it would be mal ki adi okay so Ka you know, kathy malkiati malkiati i think that's correct okay yes because we have we have used her work before and we were sort of hesitant mm -hmm. last week and then i got to thinking about it and it made me think about bruschetta because i thought people were mispronouncing it mm -hmm. but no in italy it's bruschetti okay. bruschetta mm -hmm. bruschetta yeah so anyway Kathy, we apologize for that, but yeah. um, thank you for this. I could have just messaged her. There, we, there's, there's a link to her Twitter feed right know. there. I could have messaged her and said... We might anyway. We should. Make sure we have it right. Yeah. Okay. But she was an artist, mm -hmm. as it turns out, and this is what we were talking about earlier with right. dance, that dancers develop dance therapy. Um, Dr. Malchiati is a was an artist. She mm -hmm. was training at a um, museum art school, mm -hmm. like the Chicago Mu Museum of Art as an art school. Um, I think Sarasota does too. The Ringling right. Museum has an mm -hmm. art school. So she was training as an artist mm -hmm. and um, as all artists in training do, they carry around a sketchbook mm -hmm. uh, to capture images that they may want to use later. This is not a sketchbook. Right. <clears throat> this is something completely different. Right. And she switched, and mm -hmm. she talks about that switch in the article, how she, how she switched from a sketchbook mm -hmm. to a uh, visual journal. Right. Interesting transition. It is. So when you think about a journal, you know, you're, you're thinking about you know sitting down and, and writing down mm -hmm. things that right. you experience, your thoughts, your your mood, emotion, mm -hmm. you know, some of those kinds of things. This is what I did today, dear diary, yeah. those types of things. Right. Um, with visual journals, th there's there is some aspect of that. Mm -hmm. However, it is it expands to include. Um, all types of different visual right. art. So it could right. include drawings, it could include clippings from newspapers mm -hmm. or magazines, or it could include photographs of things that you've, you're, you've seen throughout the day. Um, but it is this, um, in, uh, again, it's just sort of a combination of mm -hmm. the art therapy that we were talking right. about the other day with the, the journaling of you know what your daily experience was like or what you're experiencing mm -hmm. at a particular time. Right. And in the in the article, she talks about moving to um, imagination mm -hmm. and a uh, what she calls implied knowledge mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. there's something and she, man, I, I believe that she's right. Um, we're we're teaching that course, undergraduate course in psychology. We've been talking about personality development mm -hmm. and Freud and all that and the unconscious. I think what she's referring here to is that we all have some implied knowledge that we're not, we may not even be aware of it okay, yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. So we have to, periodically we have to access that information. Yeah. Um, and this is what the visual journal will do for you, is it will allow you to be creative, to imagine, mm -hmm. but most of all to access this implied knowledge. Mm -hmm. What's, what, why am I doing the things that I'm doing, or why mm -hmm. are so? Why am I attracted to certain things? Right. You know, I went to, I was in Europe one time, and I started taking pictures of doors for some reason. Took every place I went, they were just architecturally very mm -hmm. nice. But I wonder why, why, why that? Right. You know? uh, and so that's what she wants you to do with this: mm -hmm. is that as you're choosing subjects, and that's what um, Dr. Gibson. Mm -hmm. And, and we, talked we talked about to. in that interview is 
is what's the theme running through your, mm -hmm. what is the theme running through your selections? Why are you choosing those things? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or pick a theme mm -hmm. and then select visuals to go with that theme. Right. To, because as you investigate it, as you make your selections and you start thinking about them, again, it's a consciousness, it's a mindfulness that we typically don't use. You know, mm -hmm. we're busy yeah. and we don't use it. This forces us, it doesn't force us. It helps us to focus and center ourselves. It, it organizes it for us. Right. And, and what's, what I really like about it is that fact that it organizes it without over-organizing it. Right. You know, because when it's too structured, then you're sort of locked into, I gotta answer right. this question, I gotta do it, it's gotta look like this, it has to have this component in it. Right. And it be becomes very academic and very um, artificial um, but when it's structured, but yet, um, but yet uh, allows the opportunity to be very expansive, right. um, you can really start exploring some of those thoughts and feelings. Yeah. And that's what Dr. Gibson talked mm -hmm. about with his, is that um, you don't have to worry about your artistic talent when you're taking a photograph, right. when, you're, when you're using your iPhone or iPad mm -hmm. or camera. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, whether or not it's a good job, because that's not the point here. Right. It's not to create art. It's to be able to investigate and go to these deeper meanings. You know, mm -hmm. what what am I thinking and why? Right. What sorts of problems am I working out? We talk about dream interpretation. You right. know, we work out our problems with our dreams, mm -hmm. and this allows us to do that yeah. that same kind of thing. Um, so it's below the surface knowing. You know, most of our life takes place at the surface. Mm -hmm. This gives us a break to go below the surface. You right. can doodle, you can do collages, you can you know just whatever you want to do, right. or whatever you want to put on paper. Right. And yesterday we talked about dance, that it is an integration of body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. This too is a way of reconnecting your emotions with your cognitions, right. your, your thinking with your feeling, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're sort of bringing those two things closer together because mm -hmm. in a busy hustle bustle world, things tend to fragment mm -hmm. and you get, you know, so I, I have to be here at a certain time and I have to do this and I have to do that. This allows you to bring your thinking and your feeling closer together right. and to understand yourself. Mm -hmm. That's because that's what we want, is we want self awareness and understanding. Right. Not only to solve problems, but to just give us a deeper understanding of who we are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So so this is a a great uh, addition and, and I think that you know one of my plans is to is to um, start to incorporate this right. into some of the work that I do, especially um, for people who are more um, open to sort of creative mm -hmm. strategies for exploring things. Mm -hmm. Many people are, especially right. you know, teenagers and, and, and young adults, but it's not certainly not restricted to that population. I think teenagers, I think that's the po one of the populations I'm gonna start doing this with because I, have, I see several teenagers who will doodle. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll sit here and doodle while we're right. talking. Yeah. And I think I wanna start incorporating those um, into the work that we do mm -hmm. together. Um, I think these are, are rich, whether it's art therapy or visual journaling or, or um, uh, the Dr. Gibson's work with uh, photography. What do you call it? Therapeutic uh, photography. Therapeutic photography, I was thinking. Phototherapy. Right, yeah. it's therapeutic photography. Um, regardless of which one it is, it gives us a whole new way of uh, communicating with each other. Absolutely. We do, t we've, said, we've said this all week, we do talk therapy. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what we do, we sit right. and talk about things. Um, and this gives us a whole other area yeah. um, of rich information yeah. to use uh, in our practice. Yeah, so absolutely. Like so, so check out this article. Um, she, she links to some other um, mm -hmm. you know, great uh, resources. Um, there's lots of other right. places that you can go and read some more information about visual journaling, right. but it's a, it's a great um, strategy. Yeah, so. I think it is. All right, mm -hmm. that is it for today. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Thank you.